Can Christians celebrate Halloween, Christmas, Easter and Pentecost? Why should we never celebrate it? Halloween is an annual holiday on the 31st of October. It has roots in the Celtic festival of Samhain, an Irish festival which is a harvest festival. Because the animals and plants were dying during that period of the year, the people decided to celebrate the dead, so that their animals and their plants would not die. Celebrating Halloween allowed the dead to reach beyond the veil that separated them from the land of the living. Animals were slaughtered and cast into the flames. The Gaelic custom of wearing costumes and masks during Halloween was an attempt to copy the spirits or placate them. In Scotland, the dead were impersonated by young men with masked faces or veiled faces dressed in white. They hollowed out and carved faces to make lanterns, which were also used to ward off or repel harmful spirits. The activities practiced during Halloween are the trick-or-treating, wearing costumes and attending parties, carving jack-o'-lantern, ghost tours, visiting haunted attractions. The Celts believed that the border between this world of the living and the world of the dead became thin on Samhain, which is Halloween, allowing spirits, both harmful and harmless spirits, to pass through. The common practice was divination, which often involved the use of food and drink. We will not expand much on that, but let us now see what the Word of God says about Halloween and its activities. Chapter 1-1 The Trick or Treating The trick or treating, which involves giving food, candies, chocolates, sweeties, fruits, cakes, etc., and drinks, juice, lemonade, etc., were to practice divination. By giving that food or drink to the children who impersonate those spirits by wearing those masks or costumes, you are asking the spirit or those spirits of the dead to divine for you, to tell you what the next year harvest will be, how your business will grow, how your marriage will be next year, etc. In the Bible we have the examples of Saul in 1 Samuel 28, 7-19 who was the king of Israel. Samuel had died and Saul had nobody to tell him the will of God concerning his life or what would happen to him in the battle he was about to face. So he consulted a medium to divine for him and called the spirit of Samuel, who was dead, to come and talk to him about the outcome of the battle. It cost Saul his life. He died because of that. The Bible tells us Saul died for his sin which he committed against Jehovah, against the word of Jehovah, which he did not keep, and also for seeking a medium to inquire and did not inquire of Jehovah. And he killed him, and turned the kingdom to David, the son of Jesse, 1 Chronicles 10, 13-14. We should only inquire of the Lord, not of dead people, even if they were used by God like Samuel. The Lord says to all of us, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, an observer of clouds, or a fortune teller, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or one who calls to the dead. For all that do these things are an abomination to Jehovah. And because of these abominations, Jehovah your God drives them out from before you. Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12. And you shall be holy to me, for I, Jehovah, am holy, and have severed you from the nations, so that you should be mine. A man also or a woman that has a medium, or that is a necromancer, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood is on them. Leviticus 20 verse 26 to 27. 
So calling the dead to come into your world is necromancy, and a necromancer shall be put to death. Saul lost his life because of that. Many Christians go to the graveyards and talk to their loved ones who are dead. It is necromancy. It is against the word of God. Saul went to see a medium that she might divine for him and it cost him his life. So do not give food or drinks to the children who come trick-or-treating because they come with a spirit of divination of whatever demon or dead person's costume they are wearing. Chapter 1-2 No Idolatry Masks Costumes The Bible says in Deuteronomy 4, 15-18 Therefore take good heed to yourselves, for you saw no kind of likeness on the day Jehovah spoke to you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly and make yourselves a graven image, the likeness of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish in the waters beneath the earth. And, lest you lift up your eyes to the heavens, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, all the host of heaven, lest you should be driven to worship them and serve them, which Jehovah your God has allotted to all nations under all the heavens. So we are not to be making masks of any demon or dead person, and certainly not wearing them. Even the masks of the faces of some celebrities that they are selling in most of the stores now. The reason why they call those celebrities star or idols, American idols, is because they have become idols in the hearts of the people, and people literally worship them, and want to be like them, to dress like them, to talk like them. The Bible says, The idols of the nation are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear, nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them are like them, everyone who trusts in them. Psalm 135, 15-18 so basically, whatever idols you have in your nation, watch your heart that you do not worship them. For even movie stars and musicians and athletes, footballers, if they become an idol in your heart, you will talk like them, dress like them, see like them. If they have adulterous eyes, you will have the same. You will be like the idol you worship. So the demons that are behind that idol will be in you as well, and since there is no life in those idols but death, that will also be ruling in your life. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. They have noses, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. They have feet, but they do not walk. They do not mutter through their throat. The ones who make them are like them, and everyone who trusts in them. Psalm 115, 4-8 God made us in his own image and after his own likeness. If we put on Christ Jesus and we worship God, we will be like our God. Genesis 1, verse 26, Romans 13, verse 14. Do not put on a mask of a person or a spirit or a beast or any animal. You will be like that beast, like those demons that are behind that mask. Put on Christ Jesus. Also, the image of Jesus that many people have in their house is not Jesus but a demon. The statue of Jesus on the cross or in the hands of his mother or the baby Jesus is an idol that is a demon. Chapter 1, 3 
The spiritual implications are dangerous. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 16 to 18, it is written, We went to prayer. It happened that a certain girl, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, who brought her masters much gain by divining. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who are announcing to us the way of salvation. And she did this many days. But being distressed and turning to the demonic spirit, Paul said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out in that hour. So Paul tells us that that spirit of divination is a demonic spirit, and Paul cast it out of that girl. So why is it that we are giving food and drink to that demonic spirit of divination that comes trick-or-treating at our door? We should cast it out in the name of Jesus, like Paul did. Do not invite any demonic spirit of divination into your house by giving them food or drink. You shall not eat anything with the blood. You shall not divine nor conjure spirits. Leviticus 19 verse 26 Paul tells us, Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 God dwells in your body. His Holy Ghost dwells in you. Do not invite another ghost or spirit into your body. I say that the things which the nations sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not desire that you should have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of a table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? 1 Corinthians 10 20 to 22. So the animal sacrifices that they offer at Halloween, and they offer it to demons, not to God, and the Halloween party that they throw, it is to those demons that they are throwing those parties. That food and the drinks in those parties are dedicated to those demons. So if we partake of the cup of the blood of Jesus that we take during the Holy Communion and eat the bread that represents the body of Christ, we should not be drinking from the cup of blood of demons and eating the flesh of demons. We cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Do you not know that your bodies are the members of Christ's? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Let it not be. Or do you not know that he being joined to a harlot is one body? For he says the two shall be one flesh. 1 Corinthians six, fifteen to 16 Do not be deceived, brothers and sisters. It is a spiritual thing, and if you put on those demonic costumes and those dead people's faces, you become one of those dead people and those demons. Your members belong to Christ. Now use them to glorify Jesus, not demons. When we drink the cup of grape juice that represents the blood of Jesus, we remind the Lord that we are in a blood covenant with him, and when we eat the bread that represents his body, we proclaim the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He died for us, and our old man or woman died with him, that he was buried for us, and our old man or old woman was buried with him, and that he rose from the grave on the third day, and that we rose with him from the grave in a new creation, and the resurrected Christ now dwells in the new creation, and the Holy Spirit now dwells in this new creation. Romans 6 verse 4, Colossians 2 verse 12. We are married to the resurrected Christ that rose from the dead. Romans 7 verse 3 
So when you become partakers of the table of demons by drinking their cup and eating their food, you enter into a blood covenant with them also, and you died with them, and now they have come back from the world of the dead to dwell in you. Your body has become their temple. These are spiritual things and people think it's a joke. They think putting that jack-o'-lantern in their house or garden is innocent. They think it is a good spirit or harmless spirit and it will repel bad spirits or harmful spirits. First of all, there is only one good spirit and that is the Holy Ghost. The angels of God are good because they have the Holy Ghost. Any other spirit is a demon, and demons are like their master Satan. They come but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus and his Holy Ghost have come that you might have life, and have it more abundantly. John ten, ten. Jesus says, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. Mark 3, verse 23 to 26. So that jack-o'-lantern that the pumpkin with the candle inside is not repelling or casting out any demon. On the contrary, it is inviting more demons into your house. The candle or the bulb that they put in that pumpkin represents the life of that spirit. Yes, the life of that demon in your house. You need the life of Jesus in your house, not the life of a demon in your house. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. John 14 verse 6. He says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 8 verse 12 So why would anybody want to follow Satan and his demons, who all come from the kingdom of darkness and walk in darkness? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John 9 verse 5 as long as you have Jesus in your little world, in your house, in your business, in your garden, you will have the light of the world. But as soon as you start inviting demons into your world, then darkness will invade your little world. Chapter 1-4 Stick with God and it shall be well with you. The people celebrated Halloween and offered those burnt animal sacrifices to those demons so that they would not lose their crops and their animals through some plagues in the land. But the truth is, the only person who can protect you, your crops and your animals from the plagues is God and his Holy Ghost. The book of Exodus from Exodus 3 to Exodus 14, when God sent the ten plagues on the land of Egypt, they lost all their animals, their crops and their firstborns, and at the end God destroyed Pharaoh and his entire army in the Red Sea. None of those plagues came into the land of Goshen where the people of God were living. None of their animals died. None of their children died. None of their crops were destroyed. And when there was darkness in Egypt, there was always light in Goshen. Be on God's side, and no plague shall come near your dwelling. Psalm 91 verse 10 People will say you're taking things too seriously. It is only a holiday now. All the demonic aspects of Halloween are no longer practiced. This is a strategy of the devil, to make people think that he does not exist, and it is the deadliest weapon in his arsenal. If you and I are not careful, we will fall into the same trap. My people perish for lack of knowledge, and because they have rejected the knowledge. Hosea 4 verse 6 May we not be destroyed, because after we have heard the truth, we have decided to reject it. 
For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Hebrews 4 verse 2 to 3 God said through Hosea, Ephraim has mixed himself among the peoples. Ephraim is a cake, unturned aliens have devoured his strength, but yet he does not know it. Hosea 7 verse 8 We should not serve the Lord and add to the Lord the idols of unsaved people. We should not be partakers of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. The truth is, Ephraim was the first to go into captivity in Assyria because they decided to serve the Lord and add the demons at the same time. Judah also went into captivity in Babylon after they adopted the ways of Ephraim. God is a jealous God. I am Jehovah your God who has brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 20, verse 2 to 3. For you shall worship no other god. For Jehovah, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice to their gods, and call you, and you eat of his sacrifice. Exodus 34 verse 14 to 15 Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Mark 12 29 to 30. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 verse 15. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. John 15 verse 10. To be continued.